Can you talk a little bit about the difference between front-end workflows and back-end workflows? Because I feel like that's also a, yeah. um, mm -hmm. a, a main key point where a lot of bugginess yeah. comes into play. It's funny that you say that because sometimes when people ask me, hey, can you look at my bubble application? And, just, and, and I'll go in, they'll give me access, and I'll go in. And the first thing I do is I look and see, are they using back-end workflows? Because for me, that is a clear indicator of whether or not you're a good Bubbler Bubbler. Or not? Well, I don't want to say good because okay. you could be really good at, but you if you're not using backend workflows, you're not a professional. What's so bubbler. special about backend workflows? Well, first of all, they execute on the server. So they don't depend on whether or not your customer has a, you know, M4 Mac Pro, you know, super ultra mm -hmm. processor with tons of memory. It doesn't matter if they're on a cell phone. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, anything about, you know, what browser they're using or how old their computer is uh, because it happens on the server. So that makes instantly makes your application more responsive to the user's needs because it's, you're not asking their, their infrastructure to do work that isn't necessary. So that's just good practice. Everything you can move to the server, uh, do so. I mean, that's usually a, a good idea. Now, if something needs to happen when a person clicks a button and it has to happen instantly, well, then that's in a, a, a client-side workflow mm -hmm. and that's fine. And you can have them work together. So a client-side workflow can offload part of its work to a back-end workflow and that's perfectly normal and, and, and a good way to do things.